welcome here at Kingdom People Church in Harare, Zimbabwe. My name is Farai and uh, you will be uh, hearing a message from one of the ladies in our church. Her name is Titi Penduka and she will be preaching from the book of Luke, I believe. Um, Titi, can I pray for you? Father, we thank you for Titi. We thank you for who she is. We thank you for her life. We, uh, we pray, Lord, that you would speak through her, Lord God, that uh, uh, the word that you've imparted in her, Lord God, is uh, definitely for such a time as this, Lord God. And I pray that you would speak uh, to every heart and every mind that is under the sound of her voice, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you. Thank you, Farai. Um, hello, church. It is my first time uh, speaking to an audience that I cannot see, but uh, it gives me great joy, really, to be used of God to, to share His Word in, um, in an, a defined number of people. So like Farai prayed, may God uh, speak to us in a most powerful way today. Um, today I'll be speaking, I'll be continuing the Red Letter series and um, I'm going to be uh, speaking from Luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 6 and uh, I've titled the sermon Sent Out. Uh, in this part of scripture, um, Luke explains and narrates the time when Jesus sent out the, the twelve to continue the mission that he had been doing. So I'll just read. Luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 6. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. So at this point um, in our text, Jesus had been well on his mission. He had been gaining popularity for performing a lot of miracles. In the previous chapters, we see him restoring a demon-possessed man, healing a woman with the issue of blood, healing the leper, and um, he had also raised um, Jairus' daughter, and he had also raised the widow's son. And um, some of the people he had performed miracles on were not just random people, but there were a lot of personal experiences with the disciples as well. For example, he had uh, healed Simon's mother-in-law uh, of fever, and um, some of the disciples had witnessed the miracles of a big catch of fish under the instruction of Jesus to cast their nets. And uh, the disciples had also seen Jesus calm a really violent storm um, in a rather miraculous way. So Jesus is now calling these disciples who had seen, who had seen him performing all these miracles to join him on this mission that he had, been, uh, that he had already been on. So he just doesn't send them out blindly, but he calls them together and he gives them power and he gives them authority. And uh, he really explains to them that this power and authority is to drive out demons and to cure diseases. And he explains to them that the goal of this mission really is to extend the kingdom of God, to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And uh, he gives them a heads up also about the resources that they didn't need to worry. They should not take anything with them. And as far as their provision is concerned, they were to stay in the houses that they enter and to get their provisions from there until they leave that city. And also not to worry if some people did not take their message or leave in their message, 
just to shake their dust off their feet and move on to, to the next city. When I was reading this, especially the part of taking nothing, I would have expected the disciples well, to protest or maybe have questions for, for Jesus. Or maybe at the very least for Luke to narrate that, you know, they were perplexed or surprised or looked confused. But the disciples, according to Luke, they just set out and went on from village to village. I was quite struck um, by their level of, of obedience. And today, this message comes to us at a time when we're in the midst of the corona pandemic and all these devastating effects on people's livelihood, health, life. But as catastrophic as it is, I believe that God has allowed this outbreak to happen to, to allow us not just to slow down and reflect, but also to respond with action to his will and purposes for us as humanity. I also believe that by the time the outbreak is finished, God would have given each one of us at least one moment to ourselves to hear his voice and at least one more opportunity for us to respond. That's why I believe that today he's bringing us together, our faith and spirit once more to send us out. So let us look more closely at this commission that he gave to the twelve. And as we do, I pray that God might give us the same desire and courage to obey for us to obey, to be used of him in this time. So today I'll make four points from the sermon that we have today. And the first one is that Jesus equipped the 12 before sending them out. From the text we read that he gave them power. And when we think about power, we usually think about strength, physical strength. But the word for power used in this text is dunamis. And this refers to a miraculous ability. So. Jesus gave them an ability, not a physical one, but a miraculous ability. And he also gave them authority. Having power to do something, whether physical power or miraculous power, as this case is, doesn't necessarily f mean that it will result in action. Someone can have the power to do something, but they may not always act. I remember a time, even when I was aware of, when I became aware of my gift to teach, um, I didn't use it until I also knew that I in fact have authority from God to teach. So in addition to the power, Jesus also gave them authority. That is the right to act, the right to use that miraculous ability that he had given them. And the second point that I would like to make is that um, with this power and authority, we expected outputs that can be seen. The text reads, to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. Let's pause on this word all for a minute. When he says all demons, he would have meant whatever type of demon but he might have also meant whatever number of demon. So Jesus gave them power to drive out whatever type of demon and whatever number of demons any person might be obsessed with. Earlier on from Luke, when Jesus delivers the name word, a legion of demons, it says his name was Legion because many demons had gone into him. So whether it's one demon or a lot of demons, or what type of demon Jesus gave them power and authority to cast this out. And he also gave them the power to cure diseases. And the word for cure here is therapy. And this means a physical healing. So the power and authority that Jesus gave the apostles had expected outputs that we could see as someone who's been healed physically from an infirmity or a disease. And also, we see from the story when Jesus uh, delivered the man who was possessed by legion that 
people could see that he had been delivered. In Luke 8, verse 35, it reads, when they came to Jesus, they found the men of whom the demons had, out of whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So in both instances, when someone is healed of a physical illness or someone is delivered, we can see. So the power and authority that Jesus gives us allows us to produce outputs that can actually be seen. And we can see in a different account in Matthew that the work that the disciples went out to do is described as healing the sick, cleansing the, the lepers, raising the dead, casting out the demons. And these are all things that we can see that are as a result of application of the power and the authority that Jesus gave the disciples. Then the, point, the third point that I want to make that we see from the test is that Whilst I'm sure the disciples would have felt powerful with all this miraculous ability and the authority to go about and perform all these miracles, healing and casting out demons, but that was not really the ultimate goal of why Jesus was sending them. The goal was to restore the rule of God and to restore those who were ill. Healing Curing people of physical illnesses and casting out demons were just outputs that were feeding into the main goal to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal those who were ill. And when we look closely again at the words used in the text, to proclaim in the English uh, dictionary is to say or show something clearly, officially, and publicly. So there are two things, the showing in the same, but both have to be clear, they have to be public, and they have to be official. And the kingdom of God in this case refers to the rule of God, not just in the world around us, but also in the hearts of men. People in the neighboring villages who had come accustomed to, to who, who probably have heard all the things that Jesus was doing, and a lot of it would have been second-hand information. We know on several occasions Jesus had stopped people that he had healed from telling others. But now Jesus was sending out his disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal those that were ill. It was now the time to show and to say publicly and clearly that God's kingdom had come and that Jesus was the king in that kingdom. And the second part of the goal, which talks about, heal, or about healing those who are sick, the word healing used in this context, in verses 2 and verse 6, referring to the mission, is different from the word cure, which is used in verse 1, which you said means physical healing. The word used in, in, the, in the goal of the mission is Ayumai, which means healing, particularly as a supernatural aspect. And it brings attention to the Lord Jesus Christ himself as the great physician. So this is over and above the physical healing. The goal of what Christ was sending his apostles to do was more than just therapy. It was also about bringing those who were ill to Jesus as the Lord in the great physician. And so the illness here is different from the physical illness, but it's an illness of spirit, a lack of wholeness. What other people might have termed the God-shaped vacuum inside us. This is the illness that Jesus was, was sending his disciples to heal, to declare Jesus as the great physician. And so this also is part of bringing the kingdom of God to people, to people's hearts. It's part of proclaiming the kingdom of God, bringing it to people's hearts and filling in that vacuum. And I raise this point because we need to understand that it wasn't about the, it wasn't so much 
about the physical healing, but the goal was more about the spiritual healing. And the disciples' work was not done until they ministered to the illness in people's hearts that would result in the people being drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ himself as, um, as the great physician. Then the last point that um, I would like to bring up is that the 12 were just instruments of God. And I say this because the largest portion of the scripture that we have just read are the, led, are the red letters, which are the most important part of the commission. And that's the part that says, take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no shirt, whatever house you enter into, stay there until you leave the town. And the second, if people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So the first part is telling us that this mission was already pre-funded. The resources were going to be deployed by God. They did not need to carry or worry about even the most basic of human needs. Those of us who will be familiar with the master's hierarchy of needs, we know that food and clothing and warmth and the security brought by maybe money, having money, or having a staff to protect you, those are the first two tires, the most basic needs. But Jesus was saying, don't even worry about that. The disciples had to rely on the hospitality of the people in the homes that they entered. And in the version in Matthew, it says, for the worker is worth his keep. And this speaks to the fact that the good news of the kingdom of God is great work. In fact, it's good enough work that it will return and meet the need for provision for the disciples. If they spread that good news, they will guarantee that whoever accepted them will be able to provide for those needs in return for the good news that they will bring to them. And the second part is that even the outcome was not up to them, but it was God's. The apostles' obligation was to do their part, go from village to village, proclaim the good news, heal those who were ill. The outcome remained God's. Those who did not approve of, those who did not accept their message, all they had to do was just dust their feet off to show their disapproval and move on, taking the message further and further. And we will know that um, a lot of the people were, accustomed, were being accustomed to the signs and wonders that Jesus were, were performing. And it was expected that they would probably reject them on the basis of not performing physical healing. But Jesus was saying, if someone doesn't accept you for whatever reason, he was reassuring them that that was not up to them. The mission was to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the spiritual illnesses. To restore people to God. So I really believe that today God is sending us out again in the same way that he sent out the apostles. As Christians, as followers of Christ, we all carry the great commission with us. The one given to us in Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20 which says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end. So we might believe that we are in the very end of the times, and Jesus is saying he is with us even today to continue that great commission. So I believe today he's sending us again, out again, just as he sent out his disciples after the resurrection. In Acts 1 verse 8, he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and in all the ends of the earth. So today, 
April 2020. This is the very end of the age. And here in Zimbabwe, this is the end of the earth that Jesus was talking about. So Jesus today is sending us out again. And God has also equipped us with the same power and authority that he gave his apostles and the same power and authority that he gave his disciples in the early days. Because we have received the Holy Spirit, we also have that miraculous ability that the disciples had. In Acts 2, verse 38 to 39, we read that Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So even when Peter was talking to the new disciples, we are also included in the promise of the Holy Spirit. You and me today, here in Zimbabwe, and wherever you are listening to these messages, we are the ones that Peter refers to as the ones whom God will call. God is calling us today. And I also specifically believe that God has been calling us as kingdom people church. Over the last couple of months or maybe a year and a bit, God has spoken to us through various sermons from different people in this church. And there are four particular sermons that I would really urge all of you to go and look up again that are part of the KPC archive. There are two from Tinashe Rusike, who spoke about advancing the kingdom, and the other one who spoke about spiritual warfare. And in these two, he was really just enlightening us of how the devil is roaming around, looking to devour, how people are oppressed, and how the devil will go in the way of anyone who's trying to be delivered of any evil spirits that they have so as to block the kingdom of God. And he also talks about our spiritual warfare, how we can be equipped to identify people who are oppressed and how we can be equipped to pray for them so that they are delivered and delivered for good. And there's another sermon by Tafadzwa Rasha, and this one is from this year, and he titled it The Clean Up. And in this one, is, uh, I think it's the one about, uh, it's the one when he preached on, on legion. And he was just explaining that even things that might seem confusing and which we can't understand why they are interfering with extending the kingdom of God might have a spiritual basis and how we need to question everything in our lives like Jesus asked, who are you? And there might be spirits, legions, uh, that are at play in our lives or in the lives of people around us. Another powerful sermon about spiritual warfare. And last year again, Tongesai Wapunga spoke on authority, healing, and deliverance. The same mission that the apostles were sent on. Authority, healing, and de deliverance. And after this one, I, I felt particularly quick because Tonga Sai really explained how if someone is having bad dreams, we can pray for them and we can really fight at a spiritual level against all those forces. I would really encourage you to go and listen to these sermons again after this so that we can understand how God has been equipping us as a church, bringing these things to the fore, equipping us with how to tackle these things. For the word of God says, our warfare is not flesh and blood, but it's, it's spiritual. We fight against principalities and powers. So I really believe that God is sending us out to proclaim his kingdom. He's giving us authority and he's giving us power to really go and cast out all sorts of demons and to heal the sick and to cure those who have physical illnesses. And I think the second or third sermon before the lockdown, Chipol Wapunga also brought a very important word to us. He said she had a dream, I think, 
and um, people were getting off a bus and she felt that God was saying the time that she had prepared for us has come. We have nothing else that we should be looking out for, but this is the time to get out of the bus and to do the work that God has equipped for us. I believe God was speaking to each and every one in this church today. And I believe God is speaking again to us as a church today, saying he has given us the power, he has given us the authority. This is the time. It's time to get out of the bus. This season of Corona and lockdown is the season for harvest, is the season to fulfill the Great Commission. And like Paul, Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, I pray also that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which we have been called, the riches of his glorious inheritance for us his holy people, and above all, his incomparably great power for us who believe. The word of God says that power is the same as the mighty strength God exerted when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. This power is far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. It's a far above every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, when Paul was speaking to the Ephesians, but in the present, but also in the age to come, including the age we are living in today. So, church, I'm just saying today, God has given us miraculous ability of that level of power. And he's given us the right to use that power to drive out every kind of evil spirit, every kind of demon and to bring physical healing to those who are in need. And God wants us to use that power and authority to announce both with our words and to demonstrate with our actions publicly and clearly that God rules not only in the world around us, but also inside us. And our obligation is for us to do our part, but rely on God for provision, for strength, for courage and obedience to do these things and also to rely on God to restore the lost and oppressed spiritually to him, to our Lord Jesus Christ as the great physician. I hope God helps us in this time that we might be fruitful. Amen. <laughs>